Welcome to Emergency Medicine Review, your one-stop shop for the critique of all things emergency medicine in television and film. I'm Dr. Grumpy MD, a real emergency medicine doctor. Let's check into Gray's Anatomy. All right, they're running. That means business. The helicopter's flying in with the critical patient. You get the establishing shot. It's a beautiful thing, frankly. But I do have to say, there are no hospitals in this part of Seattle. Beautiful establishing shot. You got to see the Space Needle so you know where you are. Am I right? It just has to be said that most of the hospitals in Seattle are really far from this, actually. So if you ever need help, don't go to where they are. But let's start by figuring out what's going on with this patient. What do we got? Teddy Bryce, 15-year-old female, new onset seizures, intermittent for the past week. <laughs> ID lost in root, started grandma seizing. There is a colossal amount of stuff to talk about from this scene alone. But let's start by going to the context corner and giving ourselves some level footing. The show is Grey's Anatomy. We are actually in the first day of these doctors' careers. This is day one in season one. They are interns, surgical interns. And where we find ourselves right now is a gaggle of interns is responding to an actively seizing patient who was brought in by helicopter. Okay, so we have a lot of things to talk about and we're actually gonna use our trusty outline to keep us on track because there were a lot of dumb things that just happened and a lot of things that make me grumpy. So problem number one, running. No one does it in the hospital. It doesn't help anyone. It's more likely to hurt someone than help them. And really, it just kind of makes you look like a noob. Secondly, team size and selection. We're responding to a seizure, a neurologic emergency, with four general surgery interns on their first day of being a doctor and one general surgery chief resident. A better team here would be a nurse, maybe a respiratory therapist, and one doctor. And then problem number three, just a general life rule, do not approach a landing helicopter. You need to not be anywhere near it until the rotors have completely spun down. And in general, just don't approach it. The last thing we need is a bunch of doctors coming up to a helicopter that's landing. If George's head gets chopped off, we're not going to be able to take care of this patient. Problem number four, they showed up to this with nothing, just white coats flapping in the wind and a gurney. My general approach here is when I meet an airlift crew, I am ready to take over medical care from them. So that means having things that are ready for if you need to give medications, if you need an IV, if you're going to have to intubate this person and take their airway. I doubt the airlift crew landed and was like, oh, thank God, there's five residents here. Everything's taken care of. If you're going to show up, bring some equipment. But let's turn the audio on to hear the next problem. The past week. IV lost in route and started grandma seizing as we So the, the problem here is the flight team is like yelling at the medical team because they're giving report the second they get out of the helicopter. In real life, wait until we get into the calm environment of the hospital. It does not need to be this dramatic. And also, hearkening back to problem number two, there's no nurse with them right now. You know that flight team has to tell the story again because the most important people to know the story in general from a hospital standpoint are the nurses. Sorry to say it. So after all of that, all of the things that we just talked about, what's the stupidest damn part of this whole scene? The fucking mask is upside down again. Flashback to episode one. I know that the seasoned Dr. Grumpy viewers could have done a lot better in this situation. Put the mask on the right way. It should also be noted that in about 15 seconds, she goes from the mask being on the right way to the mask being on upside down to not having the mask on at all. So... Yeah, just do better. All right, get on her side. Let's get back into the patient here. 10 milligrams diazepam I am. No, no, the white lead is on the right. Righty, whitey, smoke over fire. A large bore IV, don't let the blood hemolyze. Let's go. This code leader is just talking way too much right now. A lot of this stuff doesn't need to be said. Oh, well, we got a wet fish on dry land. Absolutely, <laughs> Dr. Burr. <laughs> Dr. Bailey. What an ass. A shotgun. That means every test in the book, CT, CBC, Chem 7, Tox Screen. Okay, well, I think we got a lot to sink our teeth into, and I'm going to talk about two different things. The first thing being the medical care, and I actually think in this scene they did a pretty decent job, at least compared to what we've seen so far and what we might see after this scene. 
so the actual medical care here is being broken into two parts in like this sequential progression where the first goal is intervention. So we want to stop this seizure as fast as possible because having a seizure for a long, long time can be really damaging to the neurons in the brain. And where this scene shines is the fact that right away they gave the right medication at the right dose and they gave it into a muscle because they didn't have an IV yet, which is totally appropriate in seizures. I loved that. Then the second part of this treatment is trying to figure out why this person is seizing if this is a new first-time seizure. So that means sending tests just like she said, maybe imaging of the brain, maybe labs. you got to look for reversible causes, things that can cause seizure and we can treat. But this scene really breaks down the second the attending physician comes in. I think it should be noted first that he's a cardiothoracic surgeon, so his opinion on a seizure would be call a neurologist. And the first thing that he contributes is to make a joke at the patient's expense and at the expense of their medical condition. No one acts like this. It's unprofessional. It offends the hell out of me. And I hate the introduction to him in this scene. Also, it should be noted, he's a goddamn magician. He just disappeared from the background. That's an attending level move. I will give him some respect for that. Uh-oh, looks like we're gonna get some medical action here. So long. She's had <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you want to oh. oh, goodness gracious. Uh, you know, 100% commitment there from the actress, but uh, I don't think that was 100% coached on what a seizure looks like. I'm going to give that a solid 3 out of 10 for effort on what a seizure looks like. Oh boy, we are out of our depth here. Okay, she's full on the rest of him. He's had four milligrams. You two page Dr. Bailey and Dr. Shepard. Definitely could get more of that, man. Phenobarbital, loaded with phenobarbital. All right, trying a different one. Oh, good thing the nurses knew the exact dose Phenobarbital. and already had it loaded. No change. You page Dr. Shepard. I just told you. Oh, this is just not looking good. Not good team dynamics here. We are bickering. Not a good start to a code, but maybe we can get it going better here. Well, page him again. Oh boy. Staff. What do you want to we do? We are butchering this seizure uh, management. Not sure how it could get worse. Oh, it just did. <laughs> this nurse in the background yelling code blue multiple times might as well just be going. Ah! 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 All right, shocking time. Whoa, time out. I know you're not going to do it, Meredith. You obviously know what's going on. But uh, three of your team members are all touching the patient currently. So if you could just go ahead and not shock the patient, that would just be fantastic. Alrighty then. Well, now three members of the team are also in cardiac arrest. So this is going well. There's this old adage with ACLS management, which is if the shock didn't work the first time, just keep doing it. At 60 seconds, you're supposed to admit another Charge drug. Again. The rest of the team here is like, Charge this again. is so bad. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna watch at this point. Ah, but she did it. I see sinus rhythm. Yeah, you did it, Meredith. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic job. Okay. Well. You know, what needs to be said here is that there was a litany of problems with this. And at some point, we're going to do a video which talks about how you actually run codes, which is called ACLS. But at this point, instead of doing that, this was so far in left field that I'm just going to go ahead and point out all the issues I had with this without educating about them. One, an intern running a code. Two, underdosing lorazepam in a seizure. Three, no dose given for phenobarbital and the nurses just magically had it ready. Four, giving up on seizure medications one second after you gave them and saying that they didn't work. Five, not protecting the airway leading to hypoxic cardiac arrest. Six, bickering of staff during a code. Seven, not doing any CPR. Eight, not giving any ACLS drugs. Nine, nurses just kind of running around in the background. 10, shocking the staff while you shocked your patient. 11, one-handed CPR. 12. Shocking the patient not once, not twice, not three times, but four times in a row. And 13. Bagging the patient way too fast. What the hell happened? She had a seizure, a seizure. and her heart stopped. Let's replay that clip real fast so we can hear how surprised Dr. McDreamy was that the patient had a seizure. What the hell happened? She had a seizure, a seizure. and her heart stopped. <laughs> 
So the, the point here is that any well-trained doctor is not going to be shocked that their patient who was transferred here with seizures had a seizure. They wouldn't be like, oh my lord, a seizure? The part they would be shocked by is that their patient recently died from a seizure. So basically, if I were in their shoes and Meredith told me, hey, the patient had a seizure, I'd be like, oh, okay, well, that was kind of expected. And then if she told me, oh, also their heart stuff, I'd be like, what? You were supposed to be monitoring her. I checked on her and she- I got her, just, just go. Ooh, people are grumpy with so her. her. Oh man, look at that stink eye that that nurse has given her. Fair, fair. She just shocked three of her colleagues. Uh, you know, I think we could have done better in a lot of ways. You know, in a lot of ways. Existentially, definitely medically. But I do love this ending scene. You know, the reality is doctors are people. They make mistakes. I've definitely had parts in my career where I've needed to take a minute to collect myself after a difficult case. So I appreciate that they're highlighting this. In the end, what are my final thoughts? You know, I actually complimented, I think, like two things in this, which is a Dr. Grumpy first. Overall, though, I'm going to put it simply and say that that just sucked ass. I mean, really, just a hot dumpster fire of medicine. We'll be back to Grey's Anatomy. Let me know if you have any other recommendations for shows you want me to review, and we'll see you in the next episode.